This workflow will cover the basic interaction in OpenDetect. We will see how to display inline, crossline, and how to move the lines on the scene, and as well how to zoom in, zoom out, and create random line. The first thing is to select a demo project where most of the data has been already loaded. So we just go to the survey manager and we select the F3 demo 2020. OpenDetect has different setup parameters that the user can optimize based on the preference display and processing time. And this is under setting, look and feel. So you can see there is different type related to the visualization, the processing, the font horizon. So these can be optimized. There is as well short keys that can be used for uh, speeding up the interaction. So this is under a utility setting keyboard shortcuts. So they are default and they can be changed and there is large number as well that can be optimized. Each display scene has a tree which control different elements like the inline, crossline, random line, and the user can select the data to be displayed from the tree here or remove them from the display. So We'll display an inline from the menu, right click on the inline, then add and select data. The window pop up with the uh, different stored cube, so we select the 4D deep steered median filter and OK. This will display the inline. The visualization and processing go faster when you load the data to memory. You need first to check that you have enough memory uh, before loading your data. And the one way to, to do it when you don't have enough memory is to load to the memory only the part that you intend to work on or eventually scale your data to 8 bits. So to load our 3D seismic to uh, memory, we need to go to survey, reload, seismic, and then load cube, different parameter and cube to select. So here we are going to keep the same uh, 3D deep steered median filter. And you can see here we can subselect the inline and cross line range and Z range. We'll keep the default as we have small Q is as well the possibility to scale it to 8 bit and that's give us as well the size which is required to load to memory. Once happy with the parameter we can OK. So that will be loading the selected cube to memory and give us some statistics. So now this cube has been loaded. At any point of time, if we don't have enough memory or we want to switch to another cube, we can just unload and uh, load the new cube. So we can close this now. In the 3D scene, there are three modes uh, of the operation. So there is the uh, position mode when you have the cursor as an arrow, what you see in white. So this allows you to move or position different objects in the scene. Then there is the view mode. So when you go to that same arrow, the top left here, and you click on it, it switched to a hand. So that's the display mode. So this allows to move the object, like rotate or zoom in, zoom out, and there is the interpretation mode that we will see later when we cover the interpretation work. You can rotate by using the left mouse button and just moving it to the left 
or to the right by keeping press or with the shift and middle wheels and the same thing you can rotate to the left or up and down. You can pan or move the scene up or down or left to right with the mouse wheel keeping press and just moving it up and down or with control key and left mouse button pressed and moving it up and down. You can zoom in by scrolling the mouse wheel, zooming up or zooming down. To position an element in the scene, for example inline, go to inline at default and here by default it's selected 425 being in the middle. So we can go just to the top menu there in front of inline box and just change to 250 for example and hit enter. That's change the inline to the specified inline number. To position an element in the scene interactively, for example this inline, we go back to the display mode and we rotate slightly the inline display so we can see it from the side when we move it. Then we switch back to the interactive mode so now we will see that we have the arrow and when we position it on the line it's become green and we see the square around the inline that means the interactive mode is on and we just keep press the left mouse button and move the inline to the desired position, then we release. This will position interactively the inline. If we want to undo, we just choose the control Z and the inline is put back to its original position. Another way to position an object inline in this example in the 3D scene is right click on the inline display position so we can just type the desired position for example 195 and ok so that will position the inline in the same window we can set an automatic scroll of this inline for example by giving a step uh, of 10 in this case we can set it to automatic and you can see that the inline is moving with an increment of 10 every two seconds. This can be changed to manual and in this case we can use the scroll row here and uh, this can be done as well using the shortcut which is the X from the keyboard and or Z. So here you can see that the line is moving backward just using the keyboard. Another way to position object using the 3D volume, go to volume in the tree and add. An empty object is added so we just go to select attribute, select cube and we select the cube we loaded to memory which is for deep steered median filter and you can see that there is a subcube was added in the uh, display and you can scroll easily through this cube just by moving uh, the inline time slice for example or cross line. Notice that the 3D cube faces inline, cross line and time slice values are read through out in the bottom left of the 3D canvas. We can do the same thing for the cross line and Z slice. For example, if we select, we just switch off the cube and we insert a default Z slice. So we can, the same thing, change to the select mode, the arrow become green and we can just move the time slice 
up and down or just go directly to the display position and just change the Z value to 700 for example and OK so it has been repositioned at that 700 millisecond. Now we will show how to generate and manipulate random line. Random lines can be uh, created in different ways by drawing on a time slice on the horizon and as well from connecting the selected wells or along contours like between lines specified contour range or from an existing random line or from a polygon or from a table. The easiest way is to insert random line from the tree with the right mouse click add default data and the random line is displayed. The random line can be resized through the uh, using the green anchors here. It can be pushed through the seismic just with the left click and just push through. You can move it through the volume. We can rotate it from uh, using the control with the left mouse button and just drag, keep in press, and just push through the volume with the left mouse button pressed into the new direction. We can insert a new anchor from the tree, just right click on the random line and display insert a node and we can select between node 1 and 2. And we can use the anchor just with the left mouse key and drag it so the line can move in all the different positions. Now we are going to create a random line going crossing the wells. So we can just deselect this existing random line and just insert new and from wells. So we select all the wells, we order them. So we will put F3, 4 in the first, then F3, 2, second, and F02, 21, and the last one, 61. And we just review. So we can see that uh, it's going to the right order. We can just provide a name, random line wells, and OK. So that will display our random line uh, with the seismic. Before exiting OpenDetect, you can save your session from Survey Session Save. Just give it a name, my session, for example, and it will save all the data and parameter you have in uh, your uh, 3D Canva display. And next time you open OpenDetect, you can just open restore that session which is here and all the data and parameter will be restored otherwise you can auto restore by auto load and just select the session and ok this concludes this workflow of a basic interaction in the 3d scene